This is an actual case that I've already used and these small pilot holes I'm able to use a pilot drill and go at the exact angle, direction, and depth to my pre-planned implants and that way it goes exactly as planned. back to another episode of Teeth and Turbos. Today we're going to be talking about teeth. I want to explain to you guys a little bit about what I do for my day job. It's really my passion. I love doing this stuff. It's something I look forward to going to work on Monday when it's a Friday afternoon. So I am an implantologist. I study dental implants. I place dental implants. Technically it's not a specialty within dentistry yet, but it's not a matter of if, but when it will be. And when it is, I'm going to label myself as that for now because it is something that I've grown and learned to be my niche within dentistry and something that I'm really good at. And so digital dentistry is becoming a big portion of the future. I bought a practice from a guy that retired. He was starting to implement some digital dentistry, meaning planning and placing implants and things, planning them before the surgery so that way it goes a lot more efficiently. But I take things to a new level. I'm going to show you what I do and how I do it because I believe it's the future and it's the cutting edge of implant dentistry. So to start out, I'm going to show you this is a patient where she is missing. This is an actual case. This is a case that we're in the process of doing right now. She is missing the top left side of her teeth. So this is an exact 3D printed replica of her mouth. What I do is I get a 3D scan or take an impression and I have this printed and in a computer program I'm able to pull it up and place in the bone exactly where I want the implants to go. I combine the 3D image and the, the 3D x-ray together on a computer program and then design a surgical guide like this and these surgical guides for instance, I placed three implants on this upper left area to replace about five teeth, are designed to fit over their teeth exactly like this. And this is an actual case that I've already used. And these small pilot holes, I'm able to use a pilot drill and go at the exact angle, direction, and depth to my pre-planned implants and that way it goes exactly as planned. For instance, this drill, once seated completely on her teeth, I used and went through the guide on each one of these spots to get my pilot hole exactly where I want it to. Now, a lot of dentists tend to freehand this, but I have learned that if I spend the extra time to plan this digitally, have these guides 3D printed, that the results come out way better and the surgeries are a lot more efficient and quicker. And when the surgeries are more efficient and quicker, patients tend to have better healing, they end up being in less pain, and it's a win-win for everybody involved. It's really cool. I mean, I'm gonna show you guys in this video how I plan digitally a case like this and send out for the guide to be 3D printed I mean, the technology that is evolving in dentistry, I'm going to show you guys some of the equipment I have throughout a progress of videos, but I wanted you to kind of have an intro into what I do on a daily life of an implant dentist. So tag along, come and watch while I show you guys how I digitally plan a guide like this. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how I actually place these implants and what I'll do is I'll place implants on this 3D printed model so that you have an idea of what I do daily. Now, when it comes to showing live surgeries, I haven't really done that yet. It crosses a very gray area in HIPAA and I am by the book. I'm strictly do everything how it should be done and I have utmost respect for my patients and their privacy. So bear with me as I show you as much as I can withdrawing a line to make sure I don't expose any of my patient's personal information. Like I said, this is my passion. I'm really good at it and I plan to do it for a really long time. So if you guys can bear with me as I kind of show you more and more in depth of what I do on a daily basis, 
it would be appreciated. Make sure you guys subscribe, like, and comment if you like this kind of content. I know I show a very wide, diverse amount of information from my other passion, which is cars and vehicles, to dentistry. Uh, I live a very busy life, and so this is just the beginning of what I'm going to show you guys. There's a whole series of videos and equipment that I have in mind that I want to show the world because I'm on the cutting edge of it, and I'm really good at this stuff. So come tag along and watch this. So here we go. Okay. Once we have our CT in place, I am going to get it aligned. Since I'm not going to be placing implants on the bottom, I'm not going to map the nerve out here in this case. This just is an algorithm uh, 3D image. It's not very accurate. I don't use it to plan implants, but we're going to skip through the detection of the mental foramen because I'm not placing implants on the lower. I'm only doing them up top. And now I'm going to do bring in her scan of her top teeth. And then we're going to match it to the CT. So we're working on the maxilla. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use her existing location of her teeth to plan where I want the implants to go because it's really important to match her existing teeth or what I want the final product to be because it sets the restorative dentist up for when they actually put the crowns on the implants. One just so you can see what I'm doing. We'll do a molar back here in the upper left. I'm going to skip that for now. Actually, I'm going to place a scraper tube. I don't know what size implant right I'm going to be using, but I'll probably be doing something around this size. Let's do the imp tooth here. Get this positioned. Now it's kind of showing me where it wants the implant to go, but I know I'm going to be placing it somewhere different because it all depends where her bone is at. I'm doing just kind of a rough estimate of what the tooth should look like and where it should be. I'm going to increase the size of that just a hair. Bring this in this way. Make this a little bit bigger, wider. Okay, that's about where I want. I'm going to tilt this back just a hair, bring it up. There, looks good. Next. Okay, this is going to show me a quick idea of where the implant is. I know I can go bigger. I have plenty of bone here. But I'm going to skip through this and show you how I... Okay. This is a view I like to use. It's the implant tangential three. It gives me these three cross sections. Okay, I know I'm going to be replacing. Let's get the curve right since we're working on the upper. This is all auto generated and it's never really accurate. So I like to redo it so that it's easier to work with. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate her upper scan. I'll name this original. And this is going to be without teeth. Change the color of this guy. Let's get rid of this. Okay. Now I'm set up to, I know I'm going to be extracting number 9, 10, 11, and 12 during this surgery. So let's go ahead and do that now cut these teeth out of my duplicate here, my duplicate scan, let's see, that's looking good, wait to cut this tooth out, Coming up with this warning, I'm going to fix that warning here in a, in a minute. Okay, so what is talk, popping up with this warning is it means this area is cut out of this. So what I have to do 
because I have to export this and open it up in Mesh Mixer to fix the error. Basically what I've done is I've cut out too much and now I have to add it back in into a program called Mesh Mixer, which is fine. Let's see. Desktop. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smooth this down. and then I like to use the smooth tool. I like to turn the strength quite a bit down. I don't mind doing a few passes to get it all right the first time. All this stuff takes time to do so I don't mind doing it right and taking my time if it takes a couple of passes. So I'm gonna extract the teeth and then I'll fit my guide over this. What I do is I smooth it down first and then I raise it back up in case any of the tissue is inflamed. Make sure all this is processed nicely. So I smoothed it down and now I'm going to inflate it. Give myself some room on my guide. Okay. Now I'm going to save this. Name it demo. I go back to Blue Sky and I'm back to Blue Sky Bio and import this demo and this fixed scan and you can see changes I've made smoothing it down after extracting the teeth and this is just gonna make my final guide fit so much better and it didn't align properly so I'm manually align it I want it as close as I can to the original is looking healthy. Okay, once I have my models aligned, now it's time to place the implants. You can see here's the original, and then here is my edited one without teeth for my guide. Now it's not perfect, but that's okay. Okay, so here is my original, and then here is the model without teeth. So this is stimulating what it's gonna be like without without a, uh, with, after the extractions. I know I'm gonna be placing three teeth here, so let's go ahead and, or three implants, so let's go ahead and plan these implants. I'm gonna start with number 10. First I go up here and I measure what my working length is going to be. So it looks like we have a distance of about 16 millimeters by 11, which is plenty of room to place an implant. I place Zimmer tapered screw vents. We're gonna go, let's do a 4.7 by 16. 
That's going to be plenty enough implant for this area. It's going to be a lot of weight on this guy, but uh, this implant size for an anterior tooth is just awesome. Okay. So I'm going to be root banking number nine, meaning I'm going to leave the root in the mouth and because otherwise you can get a lot of bone loss in those areas and it actually has a lot of repercussions of taking the tooth out. It's difficult to salvage the bone once it's already been lost. So now I go and I check the where it's coming out of the, the previous teeth. This is perfect. I want it coming out exactly out of the lingual or tongue side of the teeth because if it's coming out the front like this, the end product there's going to be it's going to be difficult for the restorative dentist to restore this so I always like to hide my access holes on the tongue side because we want it to look nice and pretty coming out the front okay so let's move backwards we already have another one here so let's see where that that one ended up okay we can go bigger here let's do a Six by eleven and a half. That's looking a little better. I want to try and fill this whole area up. I've got plenty of bone width. I am going to be ex leaving these roots in here on number fourteen, root banking those. But I am going to be extracting number twelve and thirteen there. And we're going to do num one more implant immediate at twelve and thirteen. So let's measure how much bone we have here have plenty of width and plenty of depth. Okay, so let's place an implant. Let's do a 6 by 16. Okay, that's going to be too wide. I'm going to switch that to a 4.7. I like to have at least 2 millimeters between the bone here and the bone here. So let's go to a 4.7 by 16. There we go. Okay, so going back to the original scan, let's see where these come out. Okay, so these three implants that I've placed, I want these lines to be as parallel as possible. And that's gonna help the restorative dentist in the long run. Let's go ahead and tilt this one back a little bit like that. That's looking a little better. Let's see if we can't get a little bit more buccal angulation on this distal implant. see if we can do a little more distal on this guy as well okay that's looking better let's check these in the bone now make sure there's no issues I like the looks of this I might bring this one a little bit more forward to stay away from this distal root here and let's go to this implant on 12 and 13 see how it's looking I'm happy with where that's at and then this implant on number 10 that's number 14. Let's move that just a little bit distal away from this root here. Beautiful. Okay, so now we have our three implants that are designed exactly where I want them to go and their depth. Let's go ahead and lock these in place. And we're going to be using the Blue Sky Pilot Kit. And let's design our surgical guide. So, since I'm using a model Let's use the model that I cut the teeth off of, which is this one, and design our surgical guide. So here we have our surgical guide. I always switch to the advanced. I lock all the implants in the virtual teeth and draw my curve. So as I'm doing this, I hold down shift. I always go to the contralateral most posterior tooth. And this is gonna be the outline of where our surgical guide is going to sit. And this, you wanna get this right, here because it's difficult to come back and edit. You have to start over and redraw your curve. If you don't get this right. So I always make sure these look nice. Create surgical guide. Okay, so it's telling me that my drill guides are hidden. So I need to open those up. There we go. 
And so these automatically set my drill guides for my Blue Sky Bilo Pilot Kit. So that way when I insert the pilot drill, it goes exactly the depth, direction, and angle that I want. And let's create our surgical guide. You can also change these short and long drills depending on what kit you use. I technically don't use a Blue Sky Bio Kit. I change these to what my drills actually are. I have a caliper and I measure it every single time. Make sure I use the exact kit for every single guide because I don't like to mix and match because I want everything to be perfect the day of surgery. And it goes perfect when I am this difficult and put this much effort into my plans. So this is exactly how I plan this case with these three implants on this case. Again, I measure the length from the stopper here. So the length of the tip with the caliper and the width. And that way, when I print this guide here, there it is, this red surgical guide. Each one of these implants are going to be the exact angle, depth, and direction that I want it because my pilot drill is going to be guided perfectly by the existing teeth that will stay in place during surgery and that's it so thanks for watching guys i hope this you guys learned something from this point i just export this image i'm not going to export it because it costs ten dollars every time i do it and then i upload it to a guy's website the link in the description for his website his name is barry from digi 3d works and uh, he does an awesome job you can text him you can call him he's very knowledgeable in the industry for surgical stents and these things have been a great way to learn how to place implants to become be able to freehand them like I do sometimes, but why wouldn't you do it like this? It makes life so much easier. It helps with patient healing. It helps with surgery to be more efficient and the end product for the restorative dentist just ends up being that much better because you're planning from what you want, where you want the implants to go because a tooth position for the final restoration. So it's just a brilliant way of doing things. I know this is kind of a boring episode. I'm just showing you how to design a surgical guide. The next one's gonna be really interesting. I'm actually gonna demonstrate on this model how I drill and prepare uh, the bone for an implant and then I'm gonna place an implant with you guys. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. I really enjoy this stuff. I hope you guys do too. I know it's a little bit off the beaten path from my normal car stuff, but this channel is Teeth and Turbos. So later.